Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm your host, Shana James, and I am excited to be here today to talk about the range of how men can be and the tendency to play small because of the fear of harming others or the fear of success or you know, whatever fears get in the way, um, whatever ideas we buy into, or you as a man might buy into expectations and should and cultural prejudice and all kinds of things and how to actually, you know, I don't know if we want to say sidestep or move through that or find mm-hmm. your expression and be as big and true to yourself as you are. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to be here today with Charles Suwa Singh. Did I pronounce that right? Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, good. Thank you so much for being here and for doing this work with men and for doing this work yourself. I know you've been on a a personal journey. Do you want to give us a a quick bit of background of how you stepped into this work yourself? Yeah, um, many years ago, um, I joined a group of men um, who committed to meeting once a week. And we, we, stayed true to that for about eight years and you know it allowed us to talk about a variety of things for us whether it was relationships intimacy alcohol addictions uh, work friendships all sorts of topics pertain to being a man and particularly in these times right so this wasn't just like once a week have a beer this was once a week we're gonna know this was deep deep. dive this was deep dive work right every once in a while we'd go out for yeah. you know, a pint or two, but no, we were, we were really committed to holding ourselves, um, to being better men. Yeah. And, um, and when that journey was over, it, you know, I, w- I was seeking out other groups to do the same kind of work and yeah. found some online and in person, and I can still continue to do the work for myself. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. What would you say as we're diving into this, like what inspires you most about men having that place to be better men and to be honest and to be held and all of that? Yeah. Um, I think there's a, there's a few things for me when I'm in a circle with men is one recognizing the magnificent that, that we, we, we have, like we're, we're incredible creatures too. Right. And it's incredible for when a man can see their, their awesomeness, their magnificent, their their strength, their power, their courage, and all that. Yeah. But know that it has a place in the world, right? Um, and particularly in relationships, right? Whether it's relationship with other men and particularly with other women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there is like paramount for a man to understand where they stand with women is 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 huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I find that women can be such a mirror of, you know, when, when a man is willing to see himself, if he's in a heterosexual relationship, right. It's like, Oh, what's the impact I'm actually having? Who am I being? How am I attuning, connecting, communicating, right? There's so much there that can be gleaned. Absolutely. And that just reminds me of the, 
first chapter in the book, uh, A Will to Change by um, Bell Brook, um, Bell Hooks, Bell Hooks. Mm-hmm. which opened with that all women want the love of men, mm. regardless of their orientation, regardless of their age, their generation and whatnot. Women want to know their men love them. Mm. But wow. it takes a particular man to know what it, the power of actually loving someone is. Yes. Right. And um, and that's the journey for men is how to you how do you love women? And when you can love women, authentically love women, I'm not talking about just intimacy and sex. I'm talking about really genuinely appreciating yeah. the gifts of women, then they get respect. Yeah. I women, love this. This is totally get, not where I thought we were gonna this go. It's not totally yeah, where we're gonna going. Go. <laughs> but this is but exciting I, I, because I'm curious, yeah. you know, I have that perspective as well. And as a yeah. woman, uh I love hearing it from other men because, you know, as a woman, it's like, it's, it's self-serving in a way, right. For me to say that men yeah. loving women uh, creates all these amazing things. But, but I experience that too, that the men who I know who are lovers of women who actually deeply respect and cherish women have a whole different relationship with life. So yeah. Anything yeah. you want to say about that for yourself? Yeah. yeah I think it's, it, it, I think it's reciprocal once you can, you know, first of all, you have to love yourself, right? You have men have That's to the find foundation. a way to loving who, them, who they are. And once they can experience that kind of love, then yeah, they can extend that love to all, all relationships. But I think particularly for women it is very important for men to learn to honor and respect and to love women. And I think that's where we want our respect to be returned from. It's one thing to have respect for men, but to feel the respect from a woman is powerful. Mm, yeah. Right. Um, it's purposeful. It's supportive. It, it's generative. It's all these things. And I yeah. think that's what men deeply want is to be mm. respected by women. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I was saying the mirror before it's what I find so powerful is that it's not the mirror of how can I impress this woman or how can I mm, make her no. want me? The mirror is, no. Oh, where am I not loving myself? Where wow. am I not just able to relax yeah. you know, such that love is flowing through me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect to go here, but I could totally reflect on this because, you know, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my fifties now I've been married. Yeah. I'm currently in a marriage um, and it's, and it's doing really well. Right. Um, and what I had to learn was how to love myself so I can love someone else. Yes. And that's what was my real work was how do I love myself fully and authentically putting out all the stops, loving my strengths and my weaknesses, my shortcomings and my power. And to know I can be all of that in the presence of a woman. Yeah. Well, what I love too, is this is not separate from where we thought we were going, right? Because talking about how men play small or shrink themselves, right? Whether it's in front yeah. of a woman or in front of a colleague or in front of sure. the world, it's yeah. it's very similar. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, you, I think, it, yeah, that's a really good point. I think, man, you know, um, if I look at in relationships, the way I've observed men and even for myself, um, play small in, in, in relationships with women is not like owning what you need. Yeah. Right. Or making out the relationship only has one purpose. Uh-huh. Not bringing all your dimensions to it. Um, hiding your, your insecurities and vulnerabilities with a woman. Right. And not coming up, you know, like they're not really showcasing all of your stuff because you're afraid of not being accepted or rejected or whatever it is. Yes. Um, and then it just sounds like manipulation. You're, the woman's not receiving the full truth. And she knows that whether she yeah. realizes it or not, she, she'll pick it up. Yeah. Right. And it's right. not necessarily intended manipulation, but when we're not mm-hmm. loving ourselves and then we're hiding or trying to prove things or defending, then it does, it yeah. becomes that kind of manipulation. Yeah. It becomes untrustworthy. Yes. What do, right. Okay. I want you to go back to the one where you said a relationship having only one purpose so say that again, a relationship having a purpose. Yeah, you were saying, okay, so a couple ways to play small, not asking for your needs, hiding your insecurities. And yeah. you said making, I think you said making relationship only have one purpose. Yeah. So men might approach a relationship only for what they want out of it. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's transactional then. Yes. Right. So the purpose might be getting affection or intimacy or sex. 
the, the purpose might be getting, um, you know, a sense of false validation or whatnot, yeah. right. Or security or whatever it is, um, is filling a void that the man has that he yeah. can't f- fill himself. Yeah. So the relationship becomes one dimensional, right? Yeah. So a man might make safety in his relationship with a woman. Yep. A man might desire only sex out of a woman or whatever it is. Yeah. And then you leave everything out. Like you leave all the other rich stuff out and yeah. then the relationship has nothing. There's, there's no energy. There's no air. There's no fire to bring up the other parts of what's possible in a relationship. Yes. And again, this is such, I find such a a powerful mirror for how you relate to the rest of life, right? It's like, (laughs) hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look, look, you know, in my work, I work with men who, you know, when I work with men, I have them recognize that there's certain behaviors that they have that are patterns that you can see in all aspects of your life. Right. So many of them might come to me, well, I just want leadership coaching. Well, that's great. Cool. Um, but I'm also How are you a leader both. in all of these different areas of your life. Right? Yes, right. So one one attribute I see with a lot of men is avoidance. They avoid sharing what's really what they really need at a moment. Yeah. They avoid sharing boundaries. They avoid, avoid avoid sharing vulnerabilities or really deep felt um, stories or emotions or feelings, whatever it is. Yeah, because they don't want the conflict. They don't want to be called out. They don't want to be judged. They don't want to be criticized. They don't want to be dismissed. They don't want to yes. be all these things. Yes. So, but the way they do it at work by playing small with their boss or with their team or whatnot, they probably likely do it with their family. Right. They and avoid what, relations. But yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What do you see? I mean, this is great because it, right. It not great. It doesn't feel good. It's not, <laughs> not what we want, but the beauty is right. When we work with men in one realm, it transfers over into all of them. But what, yeah. what do you see happen when men are avoiding their needs, avoiding their vulnerability boundaries, you know, when they are playing small, what, what's the impact? Um, What's the impact on them or others? Yeah, let's start with them because I think, you know, I always like to bring it back to, okay, how are we not trying to just change our impact on others, but starting with yourself yeah. first? I think the impact, what I observed even with myself too, is a building up of, of anger. Mm. Um, when you avoid expression, when you avoid owning that you have wants, needs, desires, when you avoid your own feelings and experience and stuff, it's sort of like you're holding back anger, the frustration. It becomes anger. It becomes because right, it's your life it be- force. It's your exactly yes. right. So the consequence of holding back or avoiding is a sense of self hate, mm-hmm. rage, resentment, regret, and it's pointed directly at the self. It's not you might it might, you might come out and lash out at people around you, but it's all inward directed. Yeah. All right, because you're not owning yourself. You're not owning your life. You're not owning what it is you need and how you feel and how you want to experience the world. Um, So it's, it's a lot of the, it's like inward directed anger, rage, resentment, regret, um, grievance, Mm -hmm. um, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anger, I find that anger turned inward, right. Can look a lot more depressive sometimes, or, I mean, it could be destructive, but outwardly, but oftentimes it's deadening or numbing or, you know, addiction. Yeah. 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 I love, I love that. Absolutely. It's numbing, right. Mm -hmm. Um, You become desensitized to things. Um, And I think, you know, for men who um, do play small or avoid, um, they have to have unhealthy ways to cope right. with that. Yeah. Right. And that could include, you know, addictive behaviors, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, even working out excessively. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Food. Like seeking that energy that's being just to burn squashed. off. Yes. Right. Yeah. So um, they can find all sorts of unhealthy ways to cope with that buildup. Right. Yeah. Um, instead of just letting it out every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing how scary it can be to 
let out, you know, a need or a boundary in a moment. Yeah. And, uh, go ahead. And I think particularly for, you know, and I'm going to speak now based on my experience as a man of color, right? Great. I was just already in culture, too. already on, in culture, in our culture, you know, mm-hmm. being a white dominant culture, you know, black men are already seen as angry, violent, mm-hmm. right? Insensitive, um, unintelligent and whatnot. So when I'm black, you see a black man blow out that anger, right? Then you'd be accused of being all those things. You reinforce the, right. uh, the prejudice, the, the prejudice. stereotypes and all that. So you don't want to reinforce that stuff. So it just, then the, 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 the option is just to hold it back in again. Yeah. Right. And that's not healthy either. Yeah. Right. So much of my time in coaching is allowing men just to express that anger mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and know that that anger is in the way of them going to the next level for whatever that is in their life. Totally. It's just let that stuff out. It's such a paradox, like when I find that when, when men express anger with me and sometimes I stand in as a woman that they can, you know, channel the anger through me instead yeah. of, you know, whatever past mother, girlfriend, wife, whatever. Sure. Right. To, sure. For a man to get, oh, I have to actually express some of this anger to then be able to love or to then be able to relax oh, or to then be able to God. feel my power. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, you're committing to living life in drips. Mm. Okay. It's like you're living life in little droplets, but not actually living life fully. Right. So imagine if you were able just to release a lot of these things and stop living life in drips and drabs and whatever you can get, right. Getting out of this idea that I just got to survive the day. Yes. Yes, the survival. Versus living, versus living the day. Yeah. Right. And breathing it in and letting it out and having it all circulate and, you know, and just feeling that kind of ebbs and flows of life kind of thing. We're right. so busy holding our breath. That's what I love. Whoever said like, you know, use that metaphor of, hey, we, we breathe in and we breathe out. We don't just breathe in, right? <laughs> right. Otherwise we would die. Yeah. Yeah. But I think for, for men um, that I speak to, it is, it's also almost baked into their, I think it's socialized more than anything yeah. to brace, to brace, to brace for problems, mm-hmm. brace for conflict, to brace for the unknown. And it's, it's, it is like holding your breath. Yeah. Well, especially these days yeah. with, you know, all of the, um, just the whole dynamic in our culture with men and women and me too. And, you know, it's, it's still yeah. around. And I think a lot of men are yeah. trying to, a lot of men are trying to be so good, you know, and so kind and to make up for the shitty things that other men have done. And then those men end up, I think, being the ones who play small, get stuck. Well, they're, they're yeah, it's, 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 yeah. I see a lot of men struggling with how to carry themselves in this, in this time. Right. Um, whether you talk to, like you mentioned, the Me Too movement, when you talk about women's rights and whatnot and, and all that. And then you add in um, the anti-racist movement and everything like this. Right. And, and the promotion of women in workplaces and all that, which or look at all of these things need to be addressed. Yeah. Um, but it's confusing men like crazy. They don't know where they belong. Yeah. Right. And, what do and you they don't suggest? know how to show up. Yeah. What do you suggest? I love that phrase, like how, how a man carries himself. Yeah. How do you navigate that with men? Well, for, like I said earlier, is like, get, get their, get them to get in touch with their anger, get them in touch with what I call is that, that, um, um, dis- disowned self, unowned self, mm. right. Get them in touch with their soul again, mm. really deeply important for them. Right. Like I, you know, um, what do they hold as a virtue? Mm. What do they hold as a value? What do they hold as a quality of living? Whether it's integrity, honesty, humility, creativity, whatever it is, get them in touch with themselves, right? And notice when it is that they're playing small and just shift to the qualities that they want to honor more. Mm -hmm. Shift to those values that they want to breathe more life into, Mm. right? Um, especially if you're in, if you're if you want to play small or avoid, well, breathe some life into that. Like, what's what's wanting to emerge right now that you're not allowing out? 
Yes. Right. And just listen to that voice. Is that okay? You know what? I, I want to say something. Right. And just let that, whatever that person is that's emerging, say it. Yeah. Right. I mean, that takes some trust. Yeah, and a lot of courage. And courage. Yeah. Right. Um, because, like, what we're talking, like, for men to be seen in that way, especially if you're talking about a black man or a man of color, mm -hmm. is dangerous. Mm -hmm. To be seen in what way? To be seen as expressive and to be seen as expressive, to be seen as vulnerable, yeah. to, to be to show their inner self out could be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It could be dangerous in the presence of men, other men, especially white men. It could be dangerous in front of women mm -hmm. because they don't know what's going to come back. At them. Yeah. Right. So, um, but it's it's a skill and they got to learn how to use it. Or I got to practice it and believe I've seen and for myself and for others, once you get in that rhythm of like, okay, getting in tune with what's deeply important to you and coming from that place, um, interesting things happen in relationship. Mm. Like, Connections start to happen. You didn't seen? see the connections start to happen. Like you haven't seen before. Yes. Like instead of holding your breath, you're actually calm. Yeah. You know, you're actually relaxed. You actually at ease. You don't have to worry about being seen as at ease. You actually are at ease. You actually are at, right. That's the thing I always find really hard to put words to when men start to reveal themselves and allow their vulnerability and their boundaries all the way that whole spectrum, right? The intimacy that starts to happen. And it's not always easy and it doesn't always happen immediately, because there are yeah. dynamics that are already set up in relationships that need to be addressed. Yeah. But as that happens, the right, the intimacy and the relaxation and that sense yeah. of sovereignty is yeah. powerful. Yeah. Um, this is one of the things I had to work on, not only individually, but it's a like it's it's it was totally applicable to my work as a coach. Yeah. Um one of the things I've been able to do as a coach is create space almost immediately mm. for men and women in my coaching practice only and because meaning, I don't create I, space, meaning safety, intimacy, connection, safety, vulnerability, all of that almost immediately. Yeah. And it, it's only because I, I'm learning who I am. Mm. I don't have to be something else. I don't have to prove to you I'm a good coach. Right? I don't have to prove anything to you or to me. So, and that's the thing I'm still learning. I'm still experiencing it, but the, the work that I'm doing is allowing me to access that part of me mm -hmm. that I don't have to prove anything. Yeah. And in that I can create a space for somebody else. And I've seen some crazy things, even in my first half hour of coaching somebody new, the things that people just want to just get off their chest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be experienced. They want to know that they matter. Yeah. And it's hard to do that day to day. Right? It is. It yeah. is. And I find the whole proving, I think that's one of the things that over the past 20 years I've seen the most is, okay, when somebody doesn't have to, especially a man doesn't have to prove he's good enough or smart enough or attractive enough. Like when that part relaxes, the freedom is immense. Well, look at, you know, I, I have a pretty basic college degree in design. I spent most of my career in as, as a consultant working for tech, fairly large technology companies. Mm -hmm. I've worked with engineers from the, you know, the best schools across America when you're talking about um, MIT or Harvard or UCLA or all these schools. I don't know what the inside of these schools look like. I've never been to any of these places. Yeah. And my degree doesn't match up to someone who comes in with a master's or a PhD or, and whatnot. Um, and the first part of my life was trying to prove my worth in front of these guys. Yeah. That I can sit at the same table with you. But that stuff caused me a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. It caused me anxiety. It cost me relationships. It cost me my health. Right. Um, it, it ate me up from the inside out. Yep. Right. Because trying to compete with these guys was not, it was not, one is not fair. Yeah. Um, and I think two, it was also partly self-imposed. <laughs> right. But the idea that you have to work harder than your white counterparts is, is, is an awful thing to have to live with. Yeah. Right. But once I started to 
look into inward and see my own value and to see what I do bring to the table, mm -hmm. to see my own qualities, right? And to see also the areas where I would want to see myself grow and own that. Yeah. Once I became responsible for myself, mm. right? And then things start to change for me, right? And then my, my personal relationship changed, my relationship with work changed, you know, I got married again and that relationship changed it like just like all of these things start to come together in a different way yeah once i start looking inside and can you speak to you said taking once i took responsibility for myself can you unpack that yeah so one way to look at it in, in the, so let's, let's just say a workplace you know one way men play small black men particularly play small is this idea that there's a glass ceiling in the workplace mm -hmm. okay and the notion that there's a glass ceiling in corporate it started from something it's, you know there's this idea that you know black men black women belong in a certain part of an organization and yeah. they're not going to but also i look at men of color also holding that to be true yeah they're on the, they're all actually holding up the glass ceiling Wow. By playing small, right? Yep. Um, they don't dream. They don't allow themselves to imagine like it was possible for their, um, for their career or not. There is their responsibility. Is to make out like there is no glass ceiling. To let go of holding up this invisible glass ceiling and, and yeah. be able to dream and be able to. Exactly. Own what you want. Own what career you want to have. Yeah. Dream big, dream large, dream wide, whatever it is. And own that that's yours. Right? You know, yes, we're going to face prejudice, discrimination, whatnot, and work. That's a given. Yeah. But those don't have to be limits either. Yeah. Right? If I'm coming with certain qualities and skills and mindsets and philosophies about how I work, I'm responsible for bringing that in the world. Yep. No one else is. Yeah. Right. And how I play or act in the workplace, I'm responsible for that, including playing small. It's amazing, right? too, when I work with a lot of men who don't necessarily know what they want. And it can seem like, oh, well, what do you want? Right. That should be obvious. I know for myself, it's not yeah. always obvious either. And yeah. all of the conditioning and what gets in the way and other people's mm -hmm. needs are more important or, right, this is, I haven't seen anyone go beyond this limit. So I don't even know that I could want that. Yeah. So it is interesting yeah. that knowing what you want and owning it is a yeah. kind of responsibility for oneself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the point that I don't see other people achieving what I want. So I don't know other if, people who look like me or other people right, exactly. who have my skin color or other people who have exactly. my orientation or whatever it may be. Exactly. And I, and I, under, I understand that, yeah. especially in white corporate America, it's very, that's very much alive. Yeah. But still yet, you know, we are born with gifts to contribute to the world. We're mm -hmm. born with something that we can offer the world. Right. And that there is our responsibility to bring it out. Ooh, it's not like that. somebody else. Each person's unique gift. Everyone's got something to give. Yeah. Everyone's got something that will benefit everyone else. And that includes men, yeah. right? Um, but it's our responsibility to practice that. It's our responsibility to bring it out. It's not the rest of the world. Yeah. Right? Um, and, you know, so um, when I work with men, it's to actually rec have, help them recognize, okay, you are gifted. You're mm -hmm. here on purpose. You're here to contribute to something, yeah. right? You got gifts, you got talents, you got skill, you got creativity, you're resourceful. It's time for you to bring it out, right? Um, but, you know, it, it begins with them. For me, it begins with them understanding what's most important to them yes. and to dream big. Yeah. 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 And to that. dream. Yeah. All right. We're almost at time as you imagine wrapping up. Is there anything that you would regret if you didn't say or cover? Oh, I would regret saying. Look Not at saying. Man. You'd regret. Yeah. Right? We missed it. I mean. Yeah. No. One thing I would just underline is, you know, 
particularly for black men, is like, you know, give yourself a chance, man. Mm. Give yourself a chance. You know, whether it's working with a, with a friend, a mentor, a coach, a therapist, someone that you can, you can trust or join a, a group of men and allow yourself to dream. Allow yourself to imagine something else as being possible, right? And have somebody receive that for you mm. and just throw it back at you and play with it and whatnot. And, um, you know, as much you get into there, then other things starts to manifest. Like, I think, I think there was a saying goes, it begins in the mind and then it manifests in the world. Mm. Right. So if you don't allow yourself to think about it, if you don't contemplate on it, yep. if you don't reflect on it, if you don't voice it, then it has no way of manifesting. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to leave that there. I like that. The invitation to consider, right. And to be, I think, gentle with yourself as you do consider, for, because for sure. it's amazing how much it can bring up to start to imagine going beyond where your family or your community was, or, yeah. you know, uh, something that wasn't accepted in however you grew up, whether again, family, school, so peers. Me. Yeah. So That's the, so the love for yourself again, mm-hmm. becomes really important there. Absolutely true all that thank you thank you so much for this where can men find more of you well you can find me online um uh, com. that's my last name suasing.com and um if they're interested in my men of color group they'll see a a banner on my homepage to join the uh for men of color gatherings our open jam sessions are would be starting up in september once um every tuesday once a week every tuesday night seven to nine eastern time Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing the work and for being a a leader of men and, you know, helping men trust themselves and value themselves and Mm -hmm. dream big. I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me to be on your podcast. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, This quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.